Pottery is the catch-all term to describe decorative or functional objects formed from clay, then fired in a large oven called a kiln. The pottery is then usually painted. There are several different types of pottery, such as porcelain, stoneware, and earthenware. Earthenware produced on a larger scale is typically cast in molds. This long-time British manufacturer is famous for its bold floral and fruit designs, which feature raised lines. At the factory, the mold maker creates a plaster of Paris model of the piece on a lathe, verifying the shape and dimensions with a profile. He uses the model to cast a two-part production mold, also out of plaster, the model shaping the mold cavity. A caster takes that mold and fills it with liquefied clay, called slip. Once a layer hardens along the cavity wall, he tips the mold and pours out the excess. It takes tremendous skill to know how long to let the clay set before tipping. In about two hours, the clay inside the mold hardens sufficiently to be safely extracted. The caster now puts the piece into what they call the damp room. There, overnight, in 100% humidity, the clay fully hardens. It can now be safely worked on a lathe. Using specialized turning tools, a highly skilled craftsman applies just the right degree of light pressure to form the piece to the final shape. In this case, a ginger jar. After applying the manufacturer's stamp, he mounts the jar on a potter's wheel and pressing with a wet sea sponge, smooths the surface. A designer creates the decoration on paper, then sketches it onto a sample jar. Then she traces her design onto clear cellophane and indicates with red marker lines where the cellophane bends around the jar. An artisan now takes that cellophane and traces the design with a specially designed ink. Using the red contour marks as a guide, another artisan positions and presses the cellophane against the jar to be painted. This transfers the design onto the surface in ink. The ink will disappear once the piece is fired. Next, she creates the design's signature raised lines. The technique is called tube lining. She traces the ink lines while squeezing slip through a tiny nozzle. She uses her artistic judgment to tweak the design if necessary. Not only does this work require a steady hand, she must also squeeze with even pressure to keep the line thickness consistent. The jar goes into a controlled drying room overnight and from there into the skilled hands of a painter. With a large artist's brush, she applies just a tiny drop of watery paint. Then, with another touch of the brush, she soaks up the excess paint. She uses her finger to gently blend color transitions. The jar is now ready to be fired in the kiln the heating phase lasts eight hours, during which the temperature peaks at 1100 degrees Celsius. This cures the clay and triggers a chemical reaction in the paint, which produces rich, vibrant colors. After a 16-hour cool-down, they take the jar out of the kiln and submerge it in glaze, which contains powdered glass. They coat the painted clay surface thoroughly, inside and out. Once the glaze dries, it's back into the kiln for a second firing. This one overnight, at just above 1100 degrees Celsius. The powdered glass in the glaze melts, forming a solid glass layer over the painted clay surface. This seals the earthenware so that it's no longer absorbent and therefore capable of containing liquids. This, of course, is essential for a vase or dinnerware. Glaze also makes the surface shinier, highlighting the beauty of the artwork.